Hey, if you're new to Limba or you just want to check out what it can do, this is the video for you. We're going to cover the different types of limb that Limba can make and how to integrate them into a character. Limba has a few different ways to make limbs, but let's just start with one of the simplest. I'll click the new button and then OK, and Limba will make us a default path limb. All new limbs have three layers like this, the rendering limb layer itself, and then two controllers that are set to be guide layers. As I move the controllers around, the limb bends and stretches, and that's what we call IK mode, the default animation mode for all new limbs. All limbs have direction. The start is the point where it would join onto the body, at a hip or shoulder, and the end is where it would join onto a hand or foot. A path limb like this is a very simple path that runs from the start controller through the joint to the end controller with a stroke applied. The limb layer has a pseudo effect on it with this curvature property which lets me change how curved the path is around the joint. If I want to change the stroke colour or width, I can do that just like I would with any other shape layer by using the toolbar or the properties panel or twirling down the layer in the timeline if I wanted to add a taper or some other effect to the stroke. I'll click the new button again, but this time the OK button is greyed out and this warning message tells me why. I can't use the same layer names for my new limb as I already have in the comp. As soon as I edit the text field for the first part of the layer names, the panel updates dynamically and shows me what the new layer names will be. I'll also change the second part of the layer names in this drop down here. Then I'll change the limb type from path to taper, and when I click OK, I get a pretty different looking limb. A taper limb has a much more complex and sophisticated limb layer than a path limb does, so I can't use the toolbar or just twirl down properties in the timeline to change its appearance. Instead, there's a lot more properties in the pseudo effect to do that. I can change the width of the limb at the start, joint and end point. I can change the colours and I can change where the colours split and if they're split by straight lines or with this handy fake 3D rounding effect. Now let's make a limb with some artwork. This lovely character was designed by Gaspard. I've imported his layered illustrator file and these two layers make up the artwork for the character's right arm, which we're going to rig. So I'll select them and right click and go to Create, Create Shapes from Vector Layer to turn them into shape layers. When you rig artwork into a new limb, you have to show Limber where you want the pivot points to go, and we call this indicating. You can indicate pivot points with either a path with three points or three separate circle layers and these two buttons in Limba's panel will generate those indicators for you. I'll generate circle indicators and then I'll reposition them over the arm with the largest circle being for the start of the limb and the smallest one for the end. To make the limb, I'll select the three indicator layers and the two art layers by holding shift and clicking on them in the comp panel. Then when I hit Limba's new button, it'll pre-fill the indicator and artwork drop downs in the new limb panel with my layers. But Limba can only do that correctly if I select layers in the right order, starting closest to the body and working outwards. I didn't do that, so I'll need to change the drop downs. The same goes for the art layers where the upper art should be the bicep and the lower art should be the forearm. I'll edit the first part of the layer names that we call the prefix from left to right and change the second part that we call the suffix from a leg to an arm so that my layers are named correctly. Then I'll change the limb type from circles to shape and click OK. Limba embeds all of the artwork in a single limb layer which stretches and bends just like any other limb. A shape limb like this only contains the artwork from the two shape layers that we rigged into it and nothing more. Sometimes that's exactly what you need. But you might have noticed that as I stretch the arm, the artwork expands and makes the shoulder bulge out in a way that doesn't look very good. In the same way, if we wanted to make the upper part of the limb shorter, the shoulder will shrink and compress in a way that looks weird. The solution to all of that is Limber's circle limbs. So let's undo and get back to our circle indicators. But this time, I'll take each circle indicator, resize and colour it so that it matches the look of the limb. Then I'll select my circle indicators in the right order, working from the body outwards and the same for the artwork, selecting the upper and then the lower. Then, when I click the new button, the drop downs are pre filled correctly. The circle's limb type is automatically selected again, and I can just name it and hit OK. 
Circle limbs embed the artwork just like a shape limb, but they also embed three circular shapes with single colour fills that correspond to the circle indicators that we used. Let's zoom in and look at the shoulder. Circle limbs have controls in their pseudo effect for the sizes and colours of the circles. So I can tweak this start width property and then when I'm happy with it, I'll hit G to activate my pen tool and After Effects will show me all the points of the shapes in the layer. I'll align this point and the point on the other side of the shoulder so that they meet the circle. Then I'll delete this point at the top and adjust the tangent handles so that the artwork doesn't go beyond the centre of the circle too much. The circle shapes don't scale and stretch like the artwork, so now the shoulder always ends in a perfect circular curve that won't change shape when the limb is stretched or shortened and it's easier to integrate into the character's body. In this comp I'll draw three circles with the ellipse tool deselecting after each one so that they go on separate layers. We've seen how you can use circle indicators to make shape and circle limbs, but you can also use them to make taper limbs, and the limb will be generated in the right pose, looking how you want it to, which is much quicker than adjusting properties in the pseudo effect after the fact. To make a path indicator, you can use the button in Limbers panel, you can import one from Illustrator and convert it to a shape layer, or you can just draw one with the pen tool, like this. If you want the path to have curvature, you must add tangents to the middle point only, not the points at the ends of the path. I'll add a round cap and a taper to the stroke here, and with the layer selected, when I click the new button and then OK, Limbo makes me a path limb with the same stroke and a curve that closely emulates the one I drew. You can use either type of indicator to make any type of limb, apart from puppet limbs but path indicators really work best for path limbs and circle indicators tend to work best for taper and circle limbs. Shape limbs and pre-comp limbs only contain artwork, so which type of indicator you use with those doesn't really make any difference. So far, all of our limbs have been built with shape layers and any artwork we add to them had to also be shape layers. If we want to use artwork that's not vector-based like this amazing piece by Tim Luck, we can't use path, taper, circle or shape limbs. Tim's artwork does contain separate layers for each section of the arm, so we want something like a shape limb but for raster layers, and that's a pre-comp limb. Making a pre-comp limb is almost the same as making a shape limb, but this time I'll draw a path indicator rather than use three circles. I'll hold command to select the art layers along with the indicator and when I click the new button, Limber knows that I want a pre-comp limb with a path indicator and it's assigned the art layers correctly as well. All I have to do is name it and click OK and my limb is ready to use. Pre-comp limbs embed any kind of art inside a pre-comp which becomes the limb itself. This character, designed by Beatrix Hatcher in Photoshop, has a single layer, curved arm with a continuous bend through the joint, and that wouldn't work very well if we split it into two sections like we'd have to do for a pre-comp limb, so it's a perfect candidate for a puppet limb. I'll apply three puppet pins to the layer, working from the body outwards as always, and when I click Limber's new button, Limber knows that I want a puppet limb, so I just need to name it and click OK. Limber offers to change the puppet engine to the legacy one, which usually works better, so I click yes and the limb is ready to use. Puppet limbs are the only type of limb that can't use indicators, and they can't have more art added to them after they've been made. If you know you're going to be using puppet limbs in advance, then I'd recommend designing the character's limbs in a straight line, like a T-pose. I've designed this character in Illustrator with separate layers and if I turn them all off and re-enable them one by one, you can see that each leg is made up of three circles as well as two art layers. The hips and the upper body layers are all parented to one another. I'll select the layers that make up the left leg and make sure I do it in the right order. Hip, knee and ankle indicators, then upper and lower art layers. I'll right click, turn them into shape layers and because I selected them in the right order, I can just go straight to Limber's new button and everything will be pre-filled how I need it. I'll hit the OK button. Then I'll parent the start controller to the character's hips layer, and as I move the upper body around, the leg will stretch and bend. I could parent the end controller to the foot, like this. 
But if I do that, I'll be limited to using IK mode and I'll always have to animate the rotation of the foot myself. Instead, I want to add a new type of layer to the limb called a locator and parent my foot layer to that. I'll select either the end controller or the limb layer and click the locator button. Limba generates a new locator layer and I'll parent the foot layer to that layer. Then, when I move the end controller around, the locator auto-rotates and positions so the foot aligns with the end of the leg. If I disable the stretch checkbox on the end controller, the locator and the foot will stay on the end of the limb when I move the end controller too far away, like this. Locators are also essential for animating on FK, but we'll get to that in another video. You can add more than one locator to a limb. Adjusting the location property and the section drop-down allows a locator to go anywhere along a limb. If you set the section to joint, it'll always stick to the elbow or knee and always face outwards. To remove a locator, have it selected and then hold Alt or Option as you click on the locator button. A locator's auto-rotate property can be turned down so that it always aims downwards as you move the end controller around. You can keyframe between zero auto-rotation like that when you need a foot to stay planted to a surface and 100 when you need it to align with the limb. The rotation offset property allows you to manually rotate the locator to add anticipation or follow through. I'll undo a few steps and then turn off the Illustrator artwork for the right leg. Since the two legs are symmetrical, I can use Limba's duplicate function to make the other leg. I'll click the duplicate button, check the layer names and hit return and Limba will generate an exact copy of the limb, including the locator. To get the controllers in the right position, I'll temporarily shift parent them to the reference circles for the other leg and then set their parent drop downs back to how they were. The new limb doesn't bend out to the right side. To fix this, I need to adjust its clockwise property in the end controller. Clockwise can be keyframed, but it's usually set to either 100% or negative 100%. If you duplicate a limb for the other side of a character like this, you might also need the embedded artwork to face the other side, a bit like the clockwise value. To do that, just turn on the flip art checkbox on the end controller effect. To finish rigging this character's legs, I'll parent the right foot to the right locator and delete all the illustrator layers from both legs. Then I'll move the limb layers to where those original leg layers were in the layer stack. Start controllers often don't get used at all once they're parented, so I'll move them both to the bottom. When a limb's layers are not next to each other in the timeline, you can select any one of them and then click Limber's Select button to quickly select all of them. That's great if you want to label each limb a certain colour, like this, or if you want to just delete the whole limb. The Size button will make all the controllers and locators for a selected limb larger. If you hold Alt or Option, it'll make them smaller. The Hide Show button will set all controllers and locators for a limb to zero opacity. Hold Alt and click to show them again. To change the default shapes, sizes and colours, click the Settings button. There are three different shapes for controllers and locators and the default colour can be whatever you like. If you change your settings and want to update existing controllers and locators, hold Shift and click the Size button and all the controllers and locators in the active comp will be updated. OK, so now you know all the basics of rigging with Limba, you can watch the next video in this series and learn about how to actually animate with it. If you've got any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. I'll see you next time.